Hey, good morning. It's Edna Keefe live from Regina, Saskatchewan for Mindset Monday. So I uh, just wanted to take a couple minutes and talk about uh, our event that we had here this weekend in Regina. It was so good. Uh, we did a creative financing workshop and my mentor and very first coach when I uh, started investing in real estate, Shelly Hagen was here as my partner. So it was so good. Uh, she, she has a fresh perspective on everything because she's in the trenches every single day and she does lots of really different stuff. So it's really interesting to hear her perspective. And, and, and you know what's really uh, cool for me is that now I get to uh, stand on stage and work beside her instead of, uh, you know, learning under her for so long. So I really, really like that. I think that's so cool. And uh, so we had a full day. We had a full house. Uh, I think we had 13 students in there. Uh, we like to keep the workshops fairly small because we do uh, do a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with them. And uh, so we, uh, we gave examples of uh, creative deals that we've done. Uh, we asked for uh, uh, audience participation of uh, creative deals they'd done. There hadn't been a whole lot because uh, they're, they're, some of them were fairly new. <coughs> Although we did have one student in the crowd, <coughs> excuse me, that was working on a pretty creative deal. Uh, and then after we uh, we came back to our house and ordered pizza and spent the whole evening here uh, networking and hanging out and that's another um, big thing that I find so cool you know uh, I absolutely love these events my myself I love hanging around with like-minded people uh, I love being answered and uh, asked questions about what we've done and uh and and i'm inspired every day by people who are just starting out because i remember being in that position years ago when we were just starting out and everything was so scary and we didn't understand anything and uh we we, we were looking for guidance the whole way and thankfully we had people that stepped up and guided us so we're very happy to to guide people back and uh, I thought that, uh, that that's just so powerful of a position to be in, I think. So today we're going to talk about uh, uh, mindset uh, in, a, in a little bit different perspective. And that is, do you have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? And why does it matter? Um, so people with a fixed mindset, uh, they'll, think, they'll say things like, that's the way I've always been. I can't change. I can't do things differently. I'm not good at math. Uh, I can't. I can, I'm. I won't uh, be able to analyze a building. Um, or uh, it might be I'm good at sales, but I'm not good at uh, at book work. Uh, you know. So the growth mindset is I'm good at sales. The fixed mindset is I can't learn how to analyze a building. So I'm here to tell you that you can change your fixed from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And you know, all of us have a mix, a fixed mindset in certain things. Um, like, and, and, and it doesn't always matter. I do strongly believe that we should, um, uh, should not limit ourselves by saying we can't do things till we've tried. But I also believe very strongly in working within your strengths. So if your strengths are not analyzing the building and do uh, negotiating the deals or, or all the different parts, maybe managing the properties, then team up with somebody who's good at that kind of stuff. You should still have a basic understanding of it uh, so that if you need to, you can look at the numbers and figure it out. Uh, it, uh, I don't mind analyzing the numbers. I've done it for years and years. But when uh, when the students are working on a deal, I make them analyze it and then send it to me. I don't analyze it for them because that's uh, that's taking away their their uh, their power by doing that. Uh, I'll look at it and point out if there's if they're missing something. Uh, or another way to think of something, if that's the case. Uh, but definitely, um, definitely uh, help them uh, think about how they can figure this out. So uh, with with a fixed mindset, a lot of times people, um, they, they get in their mind that they can't do anything different. They're scared of failure and they would rather not do something and fail at it than do something and perhaps succeed at it. 
they'd, they'd rather not do that step because then they feel like a failure. Well, one of my very first uh, mentors when I was learning sales, because I, I don't have a background in sales. I was an administrator and receptionist and, and all the stuff that uh, there's no real uh, sales ability uh, wanted in that kind of stuff. And um, I, I learned and I took a course one time through a fellow called Tom Hopkins and he was a master salesperson. And, I, and he was a realtor actually, but that wasn't how I got introduced to him. I got introduced to him through, uh, through a network marketing company that I was in, uh, uh, Prim uh, Primerica, or AL Williams at the time. But anyway, it was a weekend workshop. And one of the things that uh, they uh, had us memorize over and over and over again, and in all different ways, but it was saying to ourselves, I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. So I'm going to suggest that you do that too. So don't see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. So if you learn from something that didn't go right, then it's a learning experience. It's not a failure. And we, we've, uh, we've had plenty of those, you know. Uh, I also call it education expense, you know, because sometimes we've paid for stuff and found out after we got in that it wasn't for us. It wasn't the way we wanted to do business. It was people, um, people did things differently than we were interested in doing. Uh, and uh, so we would just back out. But you know what? You spend your money and... and uh, you, you've committed to it, so you have to make that choice. You can either continue following something you don't agree with until you get all the nuggets that you can get out of there, or you can walk away. So um, that I don't consider that failure. I just consider that now I know that that's not the person I want to follow. Now I know that that's not the business model I want to follow. Uh, was it still worth it? Yeah, sometimes it was overpaid. <laughs> But you know what? Yeah, that that's a way to think of it. And um, so, so I think for years now we've had a pretty positive growth mindset. There's always things that we're learning. I'm always signing up for new new courses. I know people around me think, "Oh my gosh, I don't know how you can do so many courses." But you know what? Um, you don't have to do the course from A to Z. If there's things in there that you already know that you already do consistently, then skip that part. Go to the part. That, uh, that resonates with you and that you can really learn from. Uh, for example, in my 90 day to 5K course, I've had people come along who were just do, working on something else and they totally did their vision already. Uh, so they, they hadn't done it, uh, they hadn't answered the questions in the exact way that I asked them, doesn't matter. They already had a vision done up, it hadn't changed. Uh, so they just sent me that vision. They said, is that okay? And I go, absolutely. Like you don't have to go from scratch if you just, you know, two weeks or a month ago were, or even last year and your vision hasn't changed. You don't have to start there. Uh, I might have a, a different twist on things. Uh, so, you know, I'd recommend listening to it, but it doesn't mean that you have to do absolutely everything. Uh, same with if you know how to analyze an apartment inside and out and you don't need help with the numbers, then why, why listen? You know, I might, like I said, I might have a different take on it. Uh, but if you don't need that part, then, then go to the part about raising capital or whatever works for you. So that's one way that I, um, I get a lot done is I don't feel like I, and same with a book. I don't feel like I have to read it cover to cover. If there's something in there that, uh, uh, that points out to me that I need to learn that, I will go specifically to that chapter. If, if I find that that chapter is uh, confusing for me, well, then I might back up and see what part I'm missing that I'm not getting out of that chapter. But I might already know ma the majority of it, read that one chapter, and I've got everything I need out of that book. So there's a little shortcut for you. You don't have to do absolutely everything on every single course you ever sign up for. Uh, I know when I was um, uh, training with Ray Higdon, he's very much uh, uh, focused on network marketing, but he had a lot of stuff that I was able to use in the real estate world. So, uh, and, and when I uh, was coached with him, if there was live uh, webinars that were 100% on recruiting and stuff like that, I didn't attend. I didn't find that useful. If he was doing something on Facebook Lives or how to do videos or how to write up uh, blog posts or, or different stuff like that, 
then I would go on to that part. So uh, that that's what I suggest too. You don't have to listen to absolutely everything to get something from someone. Um, I, I'm just going to look here. I got a few comments. So good morning, Harry. Good morning, Charmaine. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Monique. Uh, good morning, Marie. Nice to have you on. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Carm. Good morning, Terry. Um, who else we got? Carla. Good morning, Carla. Mike. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Kim. Terry says he definitely has a fixed mindset. So, uh, what what makes you say that? Or do you feel like, oh my gosh, this is the way I've always thought. I'm stuck there. Is that kind of what you think? Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Shauna. Good morning, Shandell. Good morning, Wendita. Uh, Pat says, I think I still have a growth mindset. You know what? I know you, Pat. You absolutely have a growth mindset. Uh, you've, you uh, are always thinking outside the box and ahead of, ahead of your time. So it's absolutely amazing. Uh, good morning, Shebang. I hope I said that right. Good morning, Louise. Uh, and Terry says, yes, that's how I think. So, um, one of the one of the examples that I give for a fixed mindset and and a little exercise that I give you to think differently is um, you maybe could say something like, well, you know, I've I'm not I've never drove a car. I'm so nervous. I just can't. I'm just going to just be the passenger for the rest of my life. I can't learn how to drive. There's too many things to think about. You know what I'd suggest you saying is, you know what, uh, I've never driven a car, I've never been good at driving a car, whatever comes up for you. But you know what, maybe I'm going to hire a driving instructor because there's a ton of people out there who've never driven before and now they drive like nobody's business and they talk on the phone and they, you know, they're looking over your, their shoulder and they're never getting an accident. So it's absolutely doable. So think of something that you might have a fixed mindset about. Uh, I can't skate. Uh, I never liked the taste of wine, you know, whatever. And then, and try it, you know, try, try different kinds. Uh, you might find, uh, vegetables. That's a big one. How many people do you know that say, I hate vegetables. I'm never eating vegetables. Well, you know what? It's been a proven fact. And this one's for my, uh, my little brother, Darwin. <laughs> this is a proven fact that vegetables are good for you. There's so many good uh, things in vegetables that you should eat them. And so maybe it's just a mindset thing that you've talked yourself out of for years and years. I don't like green stuff. I don't like broccoli. I don't like, you know, whatever. You, you fill in the blank. And then uh, try some. Maybe try them cooked different ways. I know when I was a kid, I didn't like broccoli because every time I ate it, it was like slimy and overcooked. And, and, and you know, so then as I was older, I avoided it a lot uh, but then I found that there's different ways I like broccoli like I love it in a salad uh, not cooked uh, I also like it in Chinese food where it's just barely cooked so it's it's still uh, firm it's not soggy so I learned a way to like broccoli because I know it's so good do I eat it every day absolutely not but I don't eat anything every day so uh, try it uh, you you might find that you like it that that's a fixed versus a growth mindset uh, it might be, let me see if I can think of some other things here. Um, some people believe that not trying beats failure. And that, that's definitely a fixed mindset. So uh, uh, go, go for it. Do it. You know, like I, I tease my students all the time, you know, like I'm waiting for homework here. And I'm and, and, and not just teasing. I'm serious. You'll get your best bang for your buck if you do your homework. And I'm, I'm still waiting for some people's homework for, for uh, the modules that they're working on. So this is a reminder. If, if I haven't got them, you're cheating yourself. You're not cheating me. I already know this stuff. You're cheating yourself. Work on it. Yes, it could be hard. Yes, it could make you think differently. But that's a good thing. You know, oh, thanks for all the hearts here. I'm loving this. <laughs> And, oh, I see I got a couple more people joined on here. Uh, good morning, Robert, and good morning, Logan. Uh, hey, I just got to do a big shout out to Logan. Logan just got back from Hawaii where he got engaged to his beautiful uh, fiance, Sky. So uh, I say congratulations to him if you know him. Terry says, I'm reading the book. The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So I'm hoping this helps me along as well. You know what? It will. 
Um, and and any any books like that, uh, and if you're not a reader, wow, there is a ton of YouTube videos out there. This morning I listened to two uh, from uh, Esther and Abraham Hicks. Uh, amazing. I, I love listening to them. And you know what? Three, four, five years ago, I couldn't listen to them. It wasn't resonating with me, but now it's resonating. So that's another thing is don't say, oh, th that that doesn't fit with the way I think. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I would just say, well, I, I, I like the way they think. Uh, I'm not there yet. I have to revisit that later on. And now suddenly I'm loving it. I'm, I'm reading a book called The Law of Attraction by them and it's amazing, but I'm just coming at it from a different perspective where it fits into my life. So you can do that too. Good morning, Susie. Um, okay, so what else do we have here? Uh, some people believe that you're born with intelligence and talent and you cannot create it through hard work and effort. That's a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is, uh, I can figure it out. And, and uh, like Shelly mentioned this weekend, uh, she, she got into entrepreneurship after being a government employee for years and she just went in with the mind, I can figure it out. So that's a, that's a real growth mindset, I can figure it out. So if it's something you struggle with, stick that on your mirror on a little sticky note and say it to yourself over and over again, I can figure it out. Uh, it might be, um, I know John, uh, John Cron was saying one day that uh, he, he was, I think he was building something, I can't remember exactly. And he, or he, or he got bid on a job that he wasn't 100% sure how he was gonna do it. And, and he's not the only one I've heard this from, I've heard it from other people. I bid on a job, didn't have a clue how I was gonna do it, but I just thought to myself, I can figure it out. That is a good growth mindset. And you know what? Sometimes you have to force yourself into situations before you know everything. Uh, I'm working with a, a couple right now um, who are working on a 24 unit offer and they don't know everything. And But they're great. They're asking every question that they can think of that comes up. And, uh, you know, and they're questioning things that their realtor's doing. And you know what? That's a great growth mindset. You know, they're not willing to just sit back and take everybody's word for it. They're figuring it out. And, uh, and uh, you watch. There will be some good things happening there. Um, growth mindset, people know that you have to work the hardest for the things you love the most. Now, th this is another reason why it's so important to uh, really work on something that you love. If you're working in a field that you don't love, then don't spend a ton of time studying it to try to get better at it. It's probably not your best bang for your buck. Maybe you start figuring out, how can I do something I love every single day and get paid for it you know and you put, put it out to enough people and enough times that eventually people just start listening to you and they start th and you're going to get offers coming your way there's going to be opportunities that come your way that you didn't get six months ago so think about that uh, growth mindset people also value what they're trying to accomplish regardless of the outcome like I've taken courses thinking I'm going to learn this and I'm going to nail it and I'm going to be so good at it. And I get to the end of the course and go, I didn't really enjoy that very much. I'm just going to hire somebody who'll do that for me. You know, marketing's one of those things. I, I believe in the value of marketing, uh, but whenever I go to study it or read a book on it, it's like, it's like pulling teeth. I'm just not that interested in all the nuances in on it. I'm, and, and so if you hire people that love to do that, you'll get better results. Uh, now I'm still uh, learning and understanding it more and more so that I can give proper direction and stuff like that too. Uh, but sometimes in the meantime, you just have to work with people you know, like, and trust and, and make it work for you. Um, Growth mindset people believe in human development. They believe that everybody can get better at what they want to get better at uh, if, they, if they study it and, and focus on it enough. Uh, good morning, Garth. Good morning, Corny. Nice to have you on. Um, growth mindset people too don't try to prove they're better than others. It doesn't matter to them. You know, like how smart would I be if I started trying to prove to my marketing team that I was smarter than them? No. 
I, I you know I can question things they do from a from a questioning point of view that's okay but why would I try to prove I'm smarter than them that just uh, sh that's like uh, cutting off your nose to spite your face so uh, yeah you know and keep that in mind when you're working with that uh, with a coach or mentor and they're telling you things it doesn't mean you have to do absolutely everything their way it just means to listen and then use what you can out of it uh, one fellow saying he's got no sound. How about everyone else? Are you hearing okay? I'm right to the top on my uh, on my sound. Maybe try uh, your sound at your end and see if it's turned up high enough. Um, Louise says that's so true about figuring it out. That's how Bill Gates started with his contract for software. You know what? Absolutely. Some of the some of the most brilliant minds, or, or they they seem like brilliant minds, they're just the people who are going to give it a shot. You know, they're just going to give it a shot. They're going to see what they can do with it. Another thing that growth mindset people do is they surround themselves with like-minded people. That's so important. You know, just sitting here a Saturday night after the event, visiting with people and talking like, you know, they're, they're having people brainstorm together. I was listening to my husband and uh, Travis brainstorm about something. And all of a sudden, Ideas are popping into both of their heads that they hadn't initially thought about. Well, how powerful is that? That's you get around like-minded people and you don't limit those thoughts. If you're with people who are not like-minded, you're screening every thought you have because you think, I'm going to be judged. What are they going to think about that? Uh, but you know what? They worked at it together uh, and came out with some really brilliant ideas on how they could make certain things work. So it, it was it's cool to watch that too. Uh, they're also very self-aware. So this is one uh, one thing that I suggest to you is, um, you know, uh, just one second. Pawn, if you've got no sound, there might be a thing on Facebook too that you've got to hit on your screen. So maybe play with it a bit and see if you can get it to come up because I just had someone else mention to me that uh, the sound is good for them. So it, it's likely something at your end. Uh, sorry about that, but and I don't know exactly what to do, but Chandel, if you do, maybe maybe point it out. Um, what else do we got here? Harry says, growth mindset gets you out of your comfort zone. People with grown, growth mindset get slapped around, and the harder you get hit, the more it hurts, the better you're prepared to tackle the next one. Optimism. We're grown-ups and always remember you'll reap what you sow. Absolutely. That's so, so true. Thanks, Harry. Amanda says, if you can't hear it during the broadcast, I can send you the YouTube link after. Okay. But but there is a way to, I know I've done it too on Facebook where I'm not, uh, there's a button that you can push to make sure the sound's up on your Facebook too. Um, anyway, being self-aware. So if you notice right now that there, th there are ways that you think about fixed mindset like I can't do that I've always been that way we inherited we inherit uh, being heavy in our family all of our whole family members heavy uh, so I'll always be heavy those are fi fixed mindset things uh, yeah you might have larger bones than people I absolutely agree with that you might not have the tiny thin frame I agree with that but there's there's things that you can do there's lots of big bone people that are slim uh, so uh, keep that in mind too. So being self-aware, knowing the difference between fixed and growth, that's a step, you know. And if you could say, uh, what what's my fixed mindset reaction when I hear something, and then what's my what's something I could change it to to being a growth mindset, you know. So that there's an exercise for you to, to try. Um, growth mindset people are able to move forward with confidence grounded in facts rather than build on fantasies uh, about talent. You know, uh, uh, so there's certain talents that are, uh, that are inborn. Like you might think, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a name, uh, Michael Jordan uh, was born to be a basketball player. Well, you know what? He got cut from basketball, uh, basketball team, I believe it was in grade nine. And he, he wasn't, you know, he was good. There was no doubt about that, but there was things he was missing. And he practiced and practiced and practiced till he got to where he is. So if it's something you love, you'll put in that practice. If it's something you're kind of wishy-washy about, you won't put in that practice. So again, back to getting to know what you love, getting to know what's there for you, uh, and, and always going for it. 
And growth mindset people are always uh, looking to brighten and expand their minds. They love being about, around other growth mindset people, uh, trying out things. I, I was uh, li listening to a or um, reading a blog post by Dean Graziosi the other day, and he was hanging out with Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins says, "Hey, do you want to go in the house and?" get in the freezer or something like that. I can't remember the terminology. And Dean's like, oh, whatever. You know, if Tony's doing it, I'm sure it's safe. And he gets into this uh, uh, cryogenic machine, I think it was called. And he sat in it and it was like freezing cold. And Tony says, yeah, I get in here once a day. And he's going like, oh my God, this is like 245 degrees below zero. What am I doing? And he's sitting there and his head's still out of the thing. And Tony says, get your hand in there too. And he says, oh, so he dunked in. And then he said, after he was feeling so amazing that he went out and bought himself one and he showed a picture of himself sitting in it. So again, uh, if you're with a mentor and you trust them, try what they say and uh you know there's a reason for it we're, we were still trying to figure out yesterday how they didn't just frostbite their skin and stuff but again uh, uh don't be scared to try new things um it's not easy to embrace what's previously felt threatening like a challenge a struggle criticisms or setbacks but it is important to understand that opening yourself up to growth is what makes you more of yourself not less of yourself. And yes, you can change. So I'm going to give you a story uh, that uh, that you, probably many of you heard before, but it's very fitting here. So I want you guys to think about it. So an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight and it's between two wolves. One is evil. He's angry, envious, sorrowful, regretful, greedy, arrogant, uh, self-pitying, he faces guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other's good. He's joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you, he said to his grandson, and inside every other person too. The grandson thought for a minute and said to his grandfather, well, which wolf will win? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. So our thoughts are usually our own worst enemy. And if, if we let them be, and you know, if you learn to control your thoughts, you learn to control your life. If you have the thought of a specific desire, go for it. Uh, it might be a different desire than you've ever heard anyone else do. It doesn't matter. Uh, be, be a pioneer. It doesn't matter. Think about how you might be feeding your negative thoughts by allowing them to rule your mind. And how can you change that? Next time you have a negative thought, catch it and ask yourself, which wolf am I feeding? Am I feeding the negative um, feel sorry for myself, uh, not taking responsibility for myself, it's someone else's fault. Uh, am I feeding that wolf or am I feeding the wolf that says, I can do this? Uh, if Edna can do this, I can do that. this. If uh, Joanne can do this, I can do this. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Brenda. Brenda says, getting more comfortable with being uncomfortable, knowing that's where growth happens. That's exactly where growth happens. Growth happens outside your comfort zone. And like, it doesn't have to be 150 steps outside your comfort zone. If you're terrified of public speaking, you may not get on a Facebook Live. But maybe, maybe you start talking to somebody at a party who looks as uncomfortable as you, you know, and maybe start to help them feel less uh, uncomfortable. So, you know, there's little, there's steps that you can do. Just take a little step outside your comfort zone and, and realize that, you know, you're not going to fall off the face of the earth. And then another little step and each little step eventually becomes a comfort zone again. So try that and see if it, it'll work for you. Um, so here's, here's a little exercise uh, that I want you to think of. Identify a dilemma that you're having in your life right now, whatever it happens to be. What's your very first reaction, your fixed mindset reaction? 
Because you know what? It may not be that your first reaction is a fixed mindset reaction. Maybe you initially have a growth mindset reaction, but then you back up and have a fixed mindset reaction. Who am I to think that way? Who am I to think I can do that? Who am I to think I could get on and do a Facebook Live and actually have people listening to me and liking and commenting on it? Now create a growth mindset solution. Uh, you know, uh, I find it very easy to do videos nowadays. I can talk for a long time and uh, lots of times I get way past what time I think it should be and I, I can't check on my phone what it is. So yeah, so it's 10.30. So see, I can talk for half an hour uh, and just about always... I, I'm looking at my clock thinking, I must have talked for half an hour already. And look over and then I think on my Friday coaching, I started to turn off at about 10.30. And then I got a couple questions and came up with a couple more topics. Next thing I know, it's 5 to uh, five to 11. So it's it, it just gets easier the more that you do it. And don't, don't be scared to write yourself notes if you're not sure that you're going to remember everything you want to talk about. Or if that's not a strength of yours, have your team write out notes. You know, like this, this growth of mindset is in uh, one of my modules. But my team, uh, they, they keep track of what I talked about last week. And, and then I don't have to, right? Isn't that cool? And, and they write me up a note and they say, hey, let's talk about growth and fixed mindset today. And then they write me some notes of some things maybe that they've heard in the uh, Facebook group people are questioning, or maybe it's questions they have themselves, or just things that they think about when they're going through the material. So uh, identify a dilemma in your life right now. What's your fixed mindset reaction? What's your growth mindset solution? And bring your results back with you next Monday to share with us or post them on comments in this video. I'd really appreciate that. And you know, maybe there's some ways that I can help you uh, get past some of your fixed mindset thoughts and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, and, and just as an as a ending here, I just want to recommend, uh, if you guys are looking for a good book to read, and, and like I said, I, I believe I read this book four or five years ago and it didn't really resonate with me. So you may read it and think that's not resonating with, with me. You don't have to finish it. Uh, open it up, start it, and, and it's The Law of Attraction by Esther Hicks. And, it, and it's about manifesting your desires and it's about understanding uh, that our desires are different than everyone else's and that the universe is conspiring to send you your, your desires uh, if, as long as you can maintain focus on it. So read, read that book. You can get it as an ebook. I, I don't know. It's free or very, very uh, cheap. Um, I, have a, I have a program that I bought through Amazon that I spend like $9.99 a year on, I think it is. And there's a whole bunch of Kindle books that you can get for, for free. And I think you can get like 10 ebooks at a time. And, and then if you go over your 10, they'll just ask you to return one, kind of like a library, right? And my membership is $9.99 a year. Now, you can't access every single book through there, but you can access a ton of books. And if you get a name of a book that uh, resonates with you and, uh, and it's about something like maybe habits or something, uh, then uh, just just go into that area and see if you can find a book by somebody else about habits because there's stuff that's that's free and and they a lot of it is the same. Uh, Terry's asking Esther who Esther Hicks H I C K S and uh, she, she her her claim is and 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 it's kind of different it's kind of uh, odd if if uh, if you don't mind I say so some people think it's so natural but she claims that Abraham speaks through her and that a lot of this stuff stuff is just coming right from the universe and she's just a catalyst so uh, I find it really interesting now like I said five years ago I wasn't uh, wasn't there uh, I read about it I, I tried to practice it and, and it was just difficult uh, now it's getting to be a lot easier same with um, my power hour. I've tried to do that for years and years because I've heard uh, so many people do it. And I would, you know, be consistent here and there and, and then fall off. And, uh, and and I'm trying, still trying to be more and more consistent every single day doing that. And one of the things that uh, actually she said, she, she suggested today that I wrote down, I thought this was really interesting. Um, oh, look at Amanda put that on there, uh, the law of attraction. So she says, uh, if there's 
four main things that you can do every day uh, to attract uh, what you want into your love, uh, into your life. <laughs> I just read Sh Chandel Hayes. I love Power Hour. Yeah, Power Hour sounds. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my, my water delivery guy just drove up, so my dog's going a little crazy. Anyway, the four things that she recommends that you do every day is meditate for 15 minutes. That's just sit back, uh, try to clear your mind, and or, or let uh, thoughts come into your mind, and just let them go. Do that for 15 minutes every day. Another thing she says is go outside and move around in appreciation. And talk out loud and she says what she does is she goes through her garden and she tells every plant I love you best uh, and and every frog I love you best even if you kept me awake all, all night last night I thought it was kind of cute anyway uh, and I'm thinking oh well I'm not gonna probably go outside and wander around in the winter but uh, then then she did have another suggestion after uh, and then she says uh, every day write in a book about positive aspects of your life she says, fill five pages about five different pro uh, parts of your life every day. And, and what that does is it puts you into uh, a state of gratitude. And that's a good place to be working from every day. And then number four was look upward and outward by a window or be outside, whichever one uh, is easier for you when it's 40 below. I know I'm going to be the one by the window. Acknowledge there are universal four universal focuses that are directed 100% on you. Ask the universe for what you want uh, and then just expect and believe that you're going to get it. Uh, don't be the person that asks every single day for the same exact thing because that you'll just be that annoying person. Uh, but just, just really start to think about what you really want and be clear because if you're not clear, uh, it's hard for the universe to send you anything. Um, but uh, that, that was an exercise I thought was kind of cute. I wrote it down, so we'll see how, how good I get at that. Uh, Marco says, what was the name of the site for books to read? Um, you know what? I just get it on Amazon.ca, and uh, you can go there and you sign up for, I think it's called Unlimited Kindle Reading, if I remember correctly. And like I said, if you pay $9.99 a year, uh, you have access all year to however many books you can read. And, and like I said, not every book that you want to read is, is in there, but there's a ton of them that are. And it's almost like a library. You, put, uh, you, you can take, I think, 10 at a time, and if you're over your 10, uh, it asks you to return one. So, I mean, you can, if you're not reading one, return it. You can always go back and get it. You know, if, again, again I, I, there's a few I like to keep on there. I use for references for stuff like this, for my free coaching Fridays and that sort of thing. So, uh, thank you very much for being on with me. Uh, I got a, a lot to going on today. My marketing team's coming over and we're going to be shooting videos. So, uh, be watching for them. They're going to be coming out soon. Um, Oh, and Amanda, you're so efficient. You just amaze me. This this girl, uh, when we Shelly and I were sitting here working on our presentations, and Shelly wants to put uh, amalgamate her presentation with mine, and I'm I start trying to do it myself, and I'm not good at that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to visit with Shelly and have a glass of wine. And I said, Well, you know what? Let me. Amanda says that she's gonna be working all night. Let me send it over to her and see if she can get it done. And you know what? she got it done. It, you know, she, she was feeling bad that she didn't get it 100% done. It was way, way, way better than we would have done. And we were very happy. Uh, we ended up with more stuff than, uh, than we needed. So it was a great, great, great day. So thank you so much. And yeah, so this is efficiency. Uh, I ask and I receive right on there. Beautiful. Uh, okay, anyway, I'm going to sign off because I'm, I'm past my half hour that I like to keep it in. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, join me again next Monday and uh, on Friday again, Free Coaching Friday, all about um, uh, what, what we're doing in the real estate market. Uh, uh, come with your questions and answers. If you have anything in the meantime that you want me to talk about, let me know and we can incorporate it in. Uh, and Amanda says thank you. Well, you know what? It's so true. Uh, Shandell, Jason, Amanda, you guys are amazing. I couldn't do what I do without you. So thanks so much. And, uh, and thanks for coming on too, Charmaine. So we'll, we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.